Food is one of the most important cultural, historical treasures, something to be preserved, something to be honored, and that's not more apparent than this place that we're going to right now in the Esquilino neighborhood. It's called Erbuqueto, which does a porchetta, which is a pork roast. Crispy skin on the outside, tender, juicy, flavorful on the inside. The person we're gonna to talk to is named Alessandro. He is a fifth generation porchetta master. He's been doing it and generations above him back until 1890. So this place has been in business for 128 years and they've been doing the porchetta the exact same way. So we're gonna head over there. We're gonna grab a quick lunch with Leslie Souter, who is the new Eater Travel Editor. We're gonna get her insights on this place. We're gonna have some porchetta. We're gonna chat. It's gonna be a great time. I'm so excited. It looks like everything that I have ever wanted in a place. I think this is gonna be really good. Do you remember when you learned how to make the porchetta? Io. What do you do? anni. Già, già lavoravo con papà. Un po' di scuola, poi venivo con mamma. Capito? Three, four hours. E poi tornavo a casa. Ho eh, imparato naturale perché one day, look, two days, look, five, three days, <laughs> taglio, 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 okay. poi it's okay. But it's, it's, it's in your blood. Eh, <laughs> abbastanza, yeah. sì. Your son, Luca, Luca, you taught him the, the, the tradition, the porchetta. Yes? Sì, stato. Sono già due anni che, 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 che lavora con me. Luca, <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I like your name. You have a good name, Luca. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about El Bucchetto and learning the business? Do you feel pressure? Do you feel like... Yeah, yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. yeah. But now, uh, I just want to help my father and uh, learn this job. My grandfather and my father, they did a great job to keep this place. Yeah. Maybe my, my son will do the same. Wow. It kind of doesn't get more perfect than where we are right now. Just every detail about this place. Air buchetto. Air buchetto. Which I learned means hole in the wall. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. This is about as everyday as it gets. People stop in, they get a sandwich, or they get a piece of paper with some pork on it, and then they just leave and go about their day. It's so straightforward and simple. Yeah, it's, it's unexceptionally exceptional. Yeah. The sandwich is all parts of the pig. Literally an entire pig <laughs> rolled up. There's like, a little bit of guts in there. You get a little bit of those extra delicious bits, which Romans are so fond of. I'm really impressed with this. As you said, it's got that kind of funky gut mm -hmm. overtones, but I taste a lot of rosemary. And the idea that like you need some sort of lubrication to have a sandwich, you know. I mean, in this case, it's it's the wine. It lubricates both you if you need some, and the sandwich. That's right. To have something help it go down, <laughs> you just have a sip of wine. The temptation would be, let's put a little smear of mustard on there. Let's give it a little something extra. No, Nothing. don't do it. You've got the different texture notes of that like crunchy skin that kind of sticks in your teeth. Mm -hmm. There are little bits of cartilage and tendon that you can find in there too that give it a little pieces of chew. And again, that little slightly gamey, sort of funky gut flavor. And then just pig. Just yeah. good tasting, clean pig. Tasting notes for the antipasti. Delicious. O oily, these sun-dried tomatoes. Would eat anytime. Yeah, at all times. These artichokes, Romans love an artichoke. This time of year in particular, we are at peak artichoke season. There's not a better time to be in Rome. This salami you must get in on. Oh, salami, great. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I love that. Also, these little Slim Jims here. Slim Jims are great. The little I love, Slim Jims like, are pretty great. Fermented and cured meats. Italian food in general tends to favor that kind of thing that is deceptively simple. It's not a technique-driven cuisine. This is not like French where it's a lot about like staple sauces and that kind of thing. Italian food is about ingredients and what you start with. You do as little as you can to it just to highlight what's delicious and natural about it. And it's actually really hard to do that. Something like this, like this porchetta, is really emblematic of that because again, it's just, it's a pig rolled up with stuff sliced, served on bread, and if not every element of this sandwich is perfect, it's not gonna work. The same way that there are sort of rules about preserving the buildings and the architecture here, there are rules about preserving the food. The food is a tourist attraction and Italy knows that. There are certain foods, porchetta being one of them, that has a lot of really intense rules about how it can be made, mm. where it can be made, um, in order for it to qualify as uh, official porchetta. So this is one of the places where you can be 100% guaranteed the food cops are not gonna come in and handcuff us. 
we are eating the authentic porqueta. I sort of love that. I love the idea that a culinary tradition deserves to be protected as much as a building. It yeah. deserves to be protected as much as a monument, which when you think about it, it, that makes complete sense. It's as much, if not more, a part of the integrity and, and the tradition of a place. Yeah, we are officially eating a national treasure. <laughs> You're like, Enjoy. Like eating the Colosseum. That's what you're. <laughs> yeah, you're not as crunchy. Don't. That's right. Not as crunchy. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Dining on a Dime from El Buqueto in the Esquilino neighborhood of Rome. If you'd like to watch more, please click here. Here we go. Ooh, wow. Ooh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.